Good morning. This is Rich Nass. I'm the Executive Vice President of Open Systems Media, and I am the leader of uh, Open Systems Embedded Group. I am here today for our weekly installment of Five Minutes With, and uh, this week I have Brett Greenstein. He is the Vice President of IBM's IoT Solutions. Good morning, Brett. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Rich. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. Um, I was a little surprised to see that uh, IBM has such a big push into the Internet of Things because for the most part, most of the companies I talk to are startups and things like that. So would you please explain to me what IBM is doing in the, in the IoT space? Yeah, I, IBM has, has recognized for a while now that um, connectivity and intelligence and insight are transforming the way people build and use things. And so while there's lots of startups building connected devices, um, we're looking much more at sort of the industrial approach to this, and that is how do you enable engineers to build and manage um, these complex connected things, and how do you help companies to take advantage of the connectivity, the insights, the interaction, the real-time nature of these smarter connected things to transform their business. So I, I think engineers are now at the heart of a tremendous revolution um, with these smart connected products. And so there's a role for engineering to change and evolve to be able to better support that and help companies to take advantage of, of this connected world. So I'm guessing you're not talking about the Fitbits and the, and the end, uh, end consumer devices. That's true, right? No, no, certainly not. I, I'm, I'm looking at you know, airplanes, trains, manufacturing lines, you know, um, oil and gas rigs, um, medical devices, industrial level things um, that are increasingly connected that are also generating enormous amounts of data and have a high degree of interaction now possible through connectivity. So as, as these industrial things become virtualized, abstracted in the world and, and connected into a virtual world and be able to communicate with each other, you know, there's an enormous amount of data and potential on what to do with those to drive new efficiencies in supply chain and to transform businesses so they can deliver products as a service um, rather than just selling a thing and walking away. I think the product lifecycle itself is becoming um, more engaged and active from creation to, to the very end of life before you throw something out. Um, there's opportunities for upgrade and interaction and new streams of value with your customers by leveraging these smart connected things instead of just throwing them over the wall, selling them, and walking away. Absolutely. Okay, so what's the connection between the very common commercial IoT um, and, and what you're doing? Are, are you borrowing and or leveraging that technology, um, or, or, or are they two completely different things? No, they're actually they're very, very related. Um, the reason that uh, the consumer space has become um, – growing so fast and so interesting is that the price point for chips and intelligence and connectivity and the openness of software have enabled new levels of capability in very, very small, inexpensive devices. That same pattern applies in an industrial setting, but what it means is that sensors and data collection are much more accessible, standards-based, and um, cheaper. So now airplanes, trains, um, washing machines can have much more intelligence and content and interaction than they did before. Um, so those, that same pattern applies. It's just being used differently. Instead of being used for consumer interaction, it's being used to generate new insights into how a product operates or generating new business models by being able to leverage those products in new ways. So the standards are similar, similar communication protocols. Everything is the same open standards and, um, and, and uh, communications vehicles that are used in other devices, whether it's Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or, or 4G or beyond, um, as well as protocols that are very common, although there's unique protocols in manufacturing. Um, so very similar patterns. And I think it's really the fact that as engineers, we're realizing that we can embrace what works on a Fitbit or works on a smartphone and leverage that in a transmission or in some other industrial setting and to do new things with it. So I don't think these things will be contained in the consumer world, but I do think the consumerization is having a big influence on how industrial things are made. I think the level of expectations on software updates and um, positive, you know, um, engaging UIs is a part of the consumer effect on industrial things, which is why connected vehicles 
um, is progressing so aggressively. Okay, that's great. You know, that's interesting. And, you know, the fact that IBM, you know, is able to move on, on a technology like this so quickly, you know, I, I, think, I think that's fantastic. Okay, so let's talk about something that's much lighter, um, or actually potentially lighter. Um, I see in your bio that you lived in China for five years. That had to be a pretty eye-opening experience. Um, what's the biggest adjustment you had to make to move, in, you know, from the U.S. to China? You know, you can focus on the, the obvious things, food, language, things like that. But to me, it was about um, culture. And it doesn't mean the history and stuff, but to realize how differently people communicate, interact, um, team, and bargain. Um, it's so different at so many levels. And, and when you first get there, you think, you know, it's just a different way of bargaining on price or something. It's, it's not like that. It's really much more about how people value their interactions. So I noticed in China, for example, that people value um, extreme honesty in personal relationships, um, much more so than the U.S. People are more delicate and polite um, about certain things they might say in the U.S. And in China, they were much more blunt. But the more blunt they were, the closer they considered you in your relationship. And so I value that a lot. That was something that really took a while to really understand. Um, and that by being excessively polite, you're also sending a message that somebody is not close to you. So to me, it's those kinds of subtle things you learn in sort of working day to day and interacting with people from a very different culture to just appreciate the difference. And in, in the end, after you get past those differences of interaction, we're all, we're all people who care about our work and our families and our careers and, and, and being, you know, adding value and being innovative. That's true everywhere. But how you work together is different. And I think it's important to really embed yourself in that kind of world and, and get as much feeling for the difference. And it's different in other countries, but China just was so different from the U.S. that it took a while to really get that. That's really fascinating. Do you speak the language? Very, very little. Um, there are some people who go there who just pick it up. I wish I did. I studied, and I, I can say enough things. I call it survival language skills, but it's not enough to have a real deep conversation. I'm, I'm going to keep working on it. I hear you. Okay. Well, that's our time, Brett. Um, I, and, I, and I thank you for giving me the five minutes. That was Brett Greenstein, Vice President of IBM's IoT Solutions Group. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, Rich.